Good day, we are the Airbend and in this video, we will be covering the oxygen cycle. So first and foremost, what is the oxygen cycle? According to Britannica, it is the circulation of the oxygen in our atmosphere through nature. It is one of the most important cycles of all living things because oxygen is used by humans and animals alike for their everyday lives. And the carbon dioxide that we produce is used by plants for photosynthesis. Fun fact, did you know that the waters of the world are the main generators of oxygen in the biosphere? Their algae estimates to be to replace about 90% of all oxygen being used. Currently, the production of CO2 worldwide has increased, but thankfully, the level of atmospheric oxygen seems to be relatively stable due to the increase of plant productivity worldwide. But that doesn't mean it should be taken granted for. So today our group will be presenting the different aspects of the oxygen cycle, including what damages it, how the species involved, and what effects the damage is to our human beings. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your different presentation. There exists a balance on which the biosphere stands with all of its components. There is a harmony that occurs with its biotic and abiotic entity. However, with the growing influence of humans and their activities, changes had begun to emerge from minor ecological units to systems and cycles which govern the entirety of ecosystems. The unprecedented human intervention has shifted the paradigm towards unsustainable practices and habits with long-term disadvantages and effects. Focusing on the oxygen cycle, these anthropogenic effects would stem from the continued carbon dioxide emission into the atmosphere and the use and change of land. With all that said, let's start on how high volumes of carbon dioxide affect the oxygen cycle. Plants and microorganisms consume carbon dioxide and produce oxygen by absorbing it from the sun. By digging up and burning fossil fuels, humans have disrupted the oxygen cycle, causing carbon dioxide to build up in the atmosphere faster than it can be absorbed by natural systems. The release of carbon dioxide from vehicles is another component that contributes to the problem. A typical passenger vehicle emits roughly 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide per year according to the US EPA. As a result, as the quantity of carbon dioxide rises, the level of the oxygen in the atmosphere decreases. Although the majority of the oxygen cycle produced globally comes from the ocean, one-third of oxygen comes from rainforests and other sources. According to a study conducted by Ehrenberg, 15 billion trees are cut down each year. Agriculture accounts roughly 80% of worldwide deforestation, while the remaining driver of deforestation accounts for infrastructure building, such as roads and dams, as well as mining and urbanization. With significantly fewer trees, there would be a lack of CO2 absorption. The impact of invasive species in the ecosystem can be devastating as it introduces new species that can cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. It may lead also to the destruction of habitation and reduction in biodiversity or even worse, extinction. One example of an invasive species is a squash bug. It is commonly found in crops such as squashes, hence the name, pumpkins, cucumbers, etc. It can be also found in small to large scale of trees. Squash bugs can be harmful to any plant as it injects a toxin into the plant and sucking the sap mouth parts. This causes yellow spouts that wilt the leaves that will leave the barring of production of photosynthesis. Squash bugs sometimes leave rugged holes in case of the vicinity of the plant is large. Squash bugs belong to the family of Buprestidae, a family of jewel beetle insects which are generally found in the Philippines. One more example of an invasive species that can be located in the air is the spiraling whitefly. The spiraling whitefly is actually a sap-sucking insect, not a fly. The egg spirals that the adult whitefly places on foliage and fruit give the species its name. It is a tropical pest that attacks a variety of horticulture crops, ornamentals, and shade trees. White flies eat the undersides of leaves mostly. Honeydew is a sweet fluid produced by larvae and adults. Mold forms on the honeydew in strong infestations, giving the leaves a dark sooty look. Sooty mold, in combination with leaf damage, reduces the plant's ability to photosynthesize. It is now an invasive species that can be found in the Philippines because of the importation of ornamental calancho in the 1970s.
what is epigenetic and how does poor air quality affect us humans caused by epigenetics. Automobile and truck exhaust is a major source of pollution in the outdoors. When we breathe in large amount of the particles found in the exhaust, they can irritate the lungs and create breathing problems. Fine particles can cause inflammation throughout the body once they enter the bloodstream. Air pollution can also cause heart attacks, strokes, and cancer. Despite prior epidemiology studies indicating gender disparities and in the health impacts of air pollution, DNA methylation changes by offspring sex, which is the link to air pollutants have yet to be investigated. Finally, the effect of prenatal exposure on the placenta, a tissue that may feel exposure from mother to kid, have yet to be explored. The placenta is essential for the development and growth of the fetus. It also serves as a selective barrier throughout pregnancy, regulating maternal fetal interaction, filtering, detoxifying toxic exposures, and establishing the overall intrauterine environment. New data reveals that placental development and function may influence offspring vulnerability to non-communicable diseases throughout their lives. What is epigenetics? Epigenetics is a study of how our behaviors and environment can cause any major works that affects our genetics. Unlike our genetics work, epigenetics is reversible and do not completely change our DNA sequence, but they can change how our body reacts to our DNA. An example of epigenetics are these three types of epigenetic effects that affects our gene in a different way which are DNA methylation, histone modification, and non-coding RNA. DNA methylation works by adding another chemical group to our DNA, blocking the protein to read the DNA gene. Histone modification is a gene that wraps around the protein and cannot be accessed by proteins that read the gene. Lastly, non-coding RNA is used as instructions for making coding and non-coding RNA. To sum it all up, there are a lot of factors that affect or may contribute to the degeneration of our environment. Invasive species such as human activities, invasive animals, and epigenetics are ways we living things contribute to this destruction. We can't deny how important carbon dioxide is to every living thing. It helps plants make their food, and in return, we get oxygen from the process that helps us breathe and survive. Plus, some invasive species help by maintaining equilibrium to the environment. But mass production of carbon dioxide and imbalance of the ecosystem is what contributes to this destruction. These factors cause ecological harm to the environment and the species that exist. In doing so, this results in the extinction of life and the depletion of biodiversity. The key to helping prevent this is control. Too much of everything in this life is bad and control of everything helps us live a balanced life.